making negative sentences. In other words, saying A is not B. Now, to make a negative sentence A is not B, we're going to have to go back to our positive sentence A is B and just remind ourselves how it works. To say A is B, A becomes our topic and we must follow it with topic particle wa, so we get A wa, so talking about A, and then B is followed by des, is or it is. So in Japanese, A is B becomes talking about A, B it is. Let's have a look at an example. The teacher is Japanese. The A portion of our sentence, the teacher, is sensei. It's followed with particle wa. And then comes B, which is Japanese, Japanese person, which is nihonjin. And then we finish our sentence with our verb des, is, or it is. Notice that verbs in Japanese always go at the end of the sentence. So the teacher is Japanese, sensei wa nihonjin des. Now we're going to make that negative. So we're going to need to say A isn't B, which becomes the teacher isn't Japanese. Okay, we're going to need our pattern now, the A isn't B pattern. And this is how it works. It's a little more complicated than the positive sentence because there are three different ways that we're going to learn. The first is the very, very formal way. And this is used when you're writing formal documents or when you're in an extremely formal situation and you're speaking to someone. So we begin with our topic just as we do with our positive sentence. So A, wa, talking about A. Then we add our B portion, whatever that may be. And finally, we're going to add the negative form of des. Now this begins with de wa. You'll notice the pronunciation of wa. That's because it's actually a particle in this word. So de wa, de wa. This is how we begin. And we finish our negative form of des with arimasen. So isn't in Japanese becomes de wa arimasen. Dewa arimasen. Now that's very formal. So let's look at one step less formal. We still begin with our A portion of the sentence, followed by topic particle wa. So we get A wa. Next we have B. But our dewa arimasen is going to be contracted slightly. And we're going to take dewa. And if you say dewa quite quickly and you're a little bit lazy, well, let's have a try. Dewa, 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 It actually ends up as ja, which is just a quick way to say dewa. Now, if you use ja, that makes your sentence slightly less formal than very, very formal. So we'll call it very formal, just one very. There's ja. And we finish with arimasen, just like our very, very formal form. So, A wa, B, ja arimasen. A is not B, slightly less formal than A wa, B, de wa arimasen. I did mention there's a third way. Now, the third way is quite polite, but it's just everyday polite. It's not very formal, and it's certainly not very, very formal. So we begin with our topic A, followed by topic particle wa, A, wa. Then we have our B, as with the other sentences. And next we put in ja, just like we did with the more formal sentence above. So ja, a contraction. But arimasen is going to be reduced one more time to a simpler or a plainer form. And that's nai des. So the everyday polite way to say A isn't B is A wa B janai des. A wa B janai des. Let's see how that works with a real sentence. Okay, we're going to use that same sentence as we had before. 
but instead of it being the teacher is Japanese, we're going to say the teacher isn't Japanese. So we begin with sensei, it's our topic, so we follow it with topic particle wa, sensei wa. Next comes the B portion of our sentence, Japanese, and that's Nihonjin. So sensei wa Nihonjin. Now we've got to put the very, very form of isn't. De wa arimasen. So a very, very formal way of saying the teacher isn't Japanese. Sensei wa Nihonjin de wa arimasen. Now slightly less formal. Sensei wa Nihonjin ja arimasen. Sensei wa Nihonjin ja arimasen. The teacher isn't Japanese. And finally, we're going to look at how to say that in everyday polite language. Sensei wa, the teacher, Nihonjin, Japanese, ja nai des. So, everyday polite language, the teacher isn't Japanese. Sensei wa, Nihonjin, ja nai des. Now, that the form that we would most normally use when we're speaking in a fairly polite situation. So that's the form that we'd be using when we're talking to our teacher and so on. Um, the form above, the very formal form, that we would use when we're in a particularly polite uh, or formal situation. Perhaps we're talking with a head teacher. And then the top, the very, very formal form, we might use when we're writing something down or we're giving a speech and we're being particularly formal. And that's it.